Hey everyone, I'm Stacy, the 911 Stitcher. Welcome to my channel about cross stitch and crafting. Today's October 9th, 2023. This is video 114. My YouTube videos are always about cross stitch and crafting. Anything that has to do with yarn or sewing or thread or cross stitch, you name it. I love yarn and thread type of crafts. As you can see in the back, I've got all my Halloween out. I've done a lot of cross stitch finishes. I've got a lot of uh, punch, here's a punch needle. This is all cross stitch. I have a dough bowl here full of little strawberries that I've done that are Halloween themed. This is one of my favorite times of year. There's the witch, the famous white witch that I did, real tall stand up. So I enjoy yarn and thread type of crafts. This video, however, is gonna be special. I just got back from London. As I mentioned in previous videos, I was gonna be going for a 10-day trip to London and I went to a retreat. We had a blast and I can't wait to tell you all about it. So check out my video that's gonna come out probably next week for a regular YouTube video about cross-stitch and crafting. This video is gonna be all about the retreat that I went to, all the goodies I received, and what made, it, what made it special? What was it like to go to a retreat in the United Kingdom and visit London? I'm gonna put our trip London pictures at the end of the video, but throughout this video, I'm gonna be talking and showing pictures as I go. I uh, couldn't wait to come back and tell you about it. Now, I have not unpacked. Everything's in bags. I've got the stuff that I got at the retreat right next to me, and I thought, you know what, what better way to start a YouTube video and just, you know what, you guys can unpack with me and I'll tell you the story of the retreat along the way. What did we get at the retreat and what was included? Where was it? I'll fill you in. So welcome back everybody. For anyone new to my channel, welcome. Next week will be a regular YouTube video about what I've been working on, the progress. I will show two things that I've been working on at the retreat I brought with me. And then next week's gonna be all the other stuff, all the regular stuff. I have a crochet blanket I wanna show you guys. Not the one I'm working on. This happens to be a new one that's out, a free chart I'll tell you guys about next week. So let's get started. Again, this is video 114. It's gonna be a special on the Great British Sampler Retreat that was held this last weekend in Swindon, United Kingdom. So my husband and I love London. We've been there several times. I've been there. This was my fourth visit. This was his second visit. And we decided to get there early. The retreat started on Friday. It was uh, the 29th, I believe, started on a Friday. So we thought, why don't we get there the Sunday before? That way we can adjust to the time change. We can go see London, see some things we didn't get to do the last trip. Last trip was full of tourist stuff. You know how it is when you go to a city, you wanna rush, 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 run, 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 and do and see in all the touristy stuff. We did that last time. So this time we thought, let's make it more relaxing. Let's do a, a just a chill trip this time. It was great because my legs did not hold up that well. You guys know I have some pretty severe orthopedic problems. I've had a lot of surgeries. My legs didn't hold up as well as I had hoped. I had some problems and I'm back at the doctor's office this morning before the video talking to, talking to him about my issues. So anyway, um, it was nice to have a relaxing trip for a change and not have to rush, rush everywhere and try like tourists do to do it all. So we arrived on Sunday. We got into customs probably around London Heathrow Airport is massive. And we got in probably around 10, 30 or 11 maybe. We thought it would be a good idea <laughs> to book the Buckingham Palace tour just a few hours later. We had planned this months ago. The king was out of residence. I Actually, I don't even think he lives there, right? He lives in another Clarence house. Is that where he's living? Anyway, they only opened Buckingham Palace a couple times, uh, a couple weeks out of the summer months for us, uh, you know, for the United Kingdom. So the rest of the year, Buckingham Palace is closed to all tourists. So we thought, what a great idea. We'll make it for four o'clock. We'll get a little rest. Well, our plane was running a little bit late. Customs was, it didn't take long to get through customs. Still had to get a taxi, had to go to the hotel, unpack. The room was extremely small. <laughs> We're unpacking and I'm dying. And I told my husband, I've got to take a nap. I'm so, cause I can't sleep on a plane. I don't know about you guys. I can't sleep on a plane. Anyway, it was really funny because I fell, I, I laid on the bed. I was out. 
I kid you not, I woke up and I said, I asked him, do you want to do the tour? And he's like, no. <laughs> I go, me neither. We were so tired. And it was the last day. The last day the Buckingham Palace was open. So we did miss it. You know what? It's not going anywhere. We'll be back another time and we'll do it then. So it was nice to just come back to the hotel, relax. We woke up about 4.30. Again, our tour was at 4, so we definitely missed that. Anyway, we woke up and thought, let's go eat. Let's go find a nice restaurant. And within walking distance, we were on the wharf. We were down in the Imperial Wharf area, if you're familiar with that area. I believe it's Chelsea. We went walking down the wharf. It was beautiful, beautiful. And me and my husband are both what do they call it? Plane watchers, plane spotters, where we love aviation. We, we love to watch the planes. So the path coming into Heathrow was right over us. So we had a good time naming all the airlines. Where did they come from? We love that stuff. We're, we've been plane geeks for years. So this was really cool that we had a good location so we could see the planes going up overhead. We had went to a, a beautiful restaurant right by our hotel. Again, within walking distance was a wonderful Lebanese restaurant. Next door was Italian. Next door to that was Asian. We had everything we loved. So we thought, that's it. We're going to go for a nice dinner. We had such a nice dinner and just relaxed and got up the next day and thought, you know what? Today's the day to go walking around, get on the underground train and go, you know, go see the sights. So we decided that, so again, we arrived Sunday before the retreat. We didn't have to leave for Swindon, which is about an hour and a half or so, hour and 15 outside of London. We had, we had no traffic. And that wasn't until Thursday. That's when we would make our way to where the retreat was held in Swindon. So we thought Monday, let's see what we should do. Trafalgar Square. I don't know if you're familiar with the beautiful lion's the column, the beautiful uh, Lord Nelson column. It's one of my favorite places. And it, it's very, very special to me. Again, I've been there to Trafalgar Square every time I visited London. It's very special to me because it reminds me of my aunt. My aunt used to live in London. And I remember pictures that she has taken. Now they're way black and white pictures. They are from a long time ago. And my aunt has since passed away. And sitting in Trafalgar Square, we had, we went to pret -a manger I don't know if you know what that is. It's a place where you can go get some almond, uh, almond croissants. Those were my favorite. <laughs> and it's a chain around, you know, England. You can see the chain. Fantastic almond croissants. Now, I know there's better. Lots of people wrote to me and said, hey, you could get a better uh, almond croissant here and here and here. Anyway, so next visit, my hunt is going to be to find the best almond croissant in the UK. <laughs> It's my favorite. I love them. So we sat there and had some drinks and we had our croissants. He got a chocolate one and we just enjoyed. And it just, it, it kind of made me a little teary eyed when I was there because I really missed my aunt. She was very special to me. That's my dad's sister and she's also gone. So being there reminded me of her and I could almost feel her presence. It was pretty special being there and just sitting there in the evening relaxing. So after that, we decided, let's go, let's go on an adventure. We had the tourist oyster cards and we, they were full and we thought, let's go for a ride. So we went down the, into the subways. We call them subways, undergrounds, trains, whatever you want to call them. And we went on a boat ride and we went down the Thames River. It was beautiful. We made our way to the Tower of London. I bought a bunch of souvenirs, of course. And long story short, we ended up walking past St. Paul's Cathedral where Princess Diana got married, one of my favorite, favorite cathedrals ever. And we went there. We didn't go inside. We just walked around. And then we made our way back and we went back to our same place. We had dinner by our hotel. Tuesday came and we have a tavern or a pub, if you want to call it a pub. It's in Earl's Court and it's our favorite. So we got our oyster cards out, made our way down to the trains and got to Earl's Court and visited our favorite tavern. Very, very good British food. And it was special to us because we had been there back years ago and we visited our ta our tavern, if you want to call it that. Uh, we decided let's do museums. So we went to the, um, the Natural History Museum. I'm going to show all these pictures at the end of the video. So instead of talking and trying to figure you know, which picture I should put where. I'm going to put those travel pictures at the end. If you're interested in seeing them, it's up to you. 
So we went to the Natural History Museum later on that night. We went on a dinner cruise down the Thames. That was my favorite. I love the museum. It's fantastic. I have never seen, I'm flip-flopping, but going back to the museum, I have never seen, they had the most incredible rock and stone exhibit. I've never seen so many cuts of stone and glass and all the natural, I shouldn't say glass, um, anything that had to do with geology. This room was so interesting. There were jewels, there were stone, you know, uh, valuable stones and diamonds and sapphires and then you could go down and see lava rocks and I mean just any kind of geological type of, of uh, they had everything I've never seen in fact I'll show a picture here I don't know if you can see just rows and rows and rows of display cases that show different artifacts and different rocks. Amazing. And uh, after that, we went down the, to the dinner cruise. I had to laugh. There was this couple. I should, <laughs> I'm supposed to be talking about cross stitch, right? There was this couple sitting next to us that were on their phones. They were like this, looking down at their phones the entire time. And I'm like, that's kind of sad that you can't talk to each other. My biggest thing is that person sitting across from you. When you're at dinner or you're doing something like that that's special, get off your phone. Put your phone away. This is a very special time and I promise you, the person sitting across from you may not be there the next day. They may not be there next year. And I use my dad as an example. Every time I went to lunch with my dad, I never had my phone. I wanted to enjoy my dad's company. I wanted to enjoy his conversation. You know, what did he see on TV? Where was that police call that he handled back in the 80s? You know what I mean? I wanted to hear everything. I wanted to hear about his time in Vietnam. I wanted to hear everything and enjoy my dad. And now he's gone. So now it's it's incredibly hard for me because losing my dad. But when I see a couple like that, that are just sitting there not talking to each other, I'm not kidding you, the entire cruise, dinner cruise was about two hours. They never spoke to each other. They just sat there across from each other on their phones. At one point, the wife put her phone away, but the guy never did. And you're seeing beautiful sights at night that are all lit up and he's asleep on his table. <laughs> I just, <laughs> anyway, all I can say, if I deliver one message in this video, Put your phones away and spend time with the person sitting across the table from you because that person's not guaranteed to be here tomorrow and i cherished every minute with my husband and i always will anyway uh wednesday we went back to the earl's court tavern because we wanted to go to our special tavern one more time because we were leaving london the next day we decided to visit the victoria and albert museum it was fantastic we just didn't have enough time. We got there late afternoon after we went to our tavern, walked to the museum, and again, I'll show pictures at the end of the video. It was just fantastic. So now it's time to drive to Swindon. Thursday came, the retreat started on Friday. Thursday, we picked up my very, very dear friend, Bettina, who many of you got to meet at the retreat. Uh, she came in from Germany. She came in at, to Heathrow. While we were on our way, we decided, um, we had planned a, a private driver to take us to Swindon, something easy because my husband had his golf clubs, we had a lot of baggage, and Bettina happened to be arriving the same time that we were leaving for Swindon. So she says, hey, you know, and I told her, why don't you ride with us? You want us to go to the airport? So we told our driver, meet us at Heathrow, Terminal 5. Picked up Bettina and all three of us went to the Swindon retreat. It was so fun. So we didn't, couldn't check in until late, so we stitched. We stitched, we enjoyed each other's company. We had such a good time. My husband had work to do. He had cases coming in and uh, so he needed some time to work on um, some of his cases. His, uh, he works on uh, fraudulent cases for accident investigations. So he was able to work while we stitched. Worked out great. Had a wonderful dinner that night and then Friday came. We stitched during the day, 
the retreat started at four o'clock and Nicola was just the whole retreat she put together a fantastic retreat it was wonderful it was entertaining every day we had guest speakers so on Friday I believe was just an open night for us we were supposed to have a guest speaker but Nicola also had a pop-up shop so she had her hands across the sea she had merchandise she had beautiful beautiful setup that she had and we all just flocked I mean we <laughs> there was 160 of us I believe and we just flocked to the tables <laughs> We also also had, I believe her name is Michelle from Tabby Cat Linen. She also is a designer and her charts were mill on the floss samplers. I believe it's all going to be Tabby Cat now as far as name. Fabric. Let me show you this video right here. Fabric, fabric, fabric. <laughs> So now is when I'm going to start adding pictures while I'm talking. So that way you can see everything I'm talking about as far as the retreat. So when we first got there, I'm going to include another video here. You can see the layout. Everybody's table's ready. We had some surprises waiting for us on the table. <laughs> <laughs> and we just had uh, we our friends me and my friends got to sit together and it was just surprise after surprise on our table of what what were we going to receive and I'll show you as I go through my stuff so anyway that's the layout I'll show you the pop-up shop as well so you can see Nicola's beautiful pop-up shop and we did shopping we, and do you know this is terrible and embarrassing to say I only bought one thing there was so much packed into the retreat we were supposed to have a guest speaker that Friday night I believe Nicola had to move it to Saturday so Saturday was full of guest speakers every time I got in line to buy something we had to go back to our the lines were long I had to go back to my table but she said bring the merchandise with you we trust you pay for it when you get a chance so I ended up putting it back on the table well of course when I go back everything's gone <laughs> the thing I wanted was gone anyway long story short she said guys we're gonna start the guest presentation this is now Saturday morning we have a jam-packed full day full of uh, guest speakers so I wasn't able to really buy a whole lot because every time I got in line the next guest speaker and I was at the end like and it happened to a lot of people so I think Nicholas said that might be changed a little bit differently to where we won't be able we won't have to get out of line to go sit back down because none of us wanted to be rude to the guest speakers as we're standing in line talking and stuff and the guest speakers trying to do a presentation so what did I buy what was on our tables what was um what what was it like until you go to retreat, it's hard to explain how wonderful retreats are till you go. And I can only say that if you're going by yourself, I can promise you that the table that you choose, you will probably come away with some new friends and it's wonderful. So go to the retreats and enjoy them, really. This particular British sampler retreat is not going to be held in the UK next year in 2024. It's going to be held in New York at Hobby House. I believe it's booked, if I'm not mistaken. So after that, I believe it's coming back to the United Kingdom, maybe in 2025. I am really hoping to be there. Let's take a look at what I bought, what was on our tables, and it's all going to be random because I'm unpacking as I'm talking to you. There was some wonderful people there. I was so grateful to see everyone that has written to me that said, hey, 
I'm going to send you this email because I'm going to get to see you at the, at the British Sampler Retreat. I can't wait to see you. They sent me Instagram messages. I was so grateful to meet all of you. So those of you that are watching, thank you for coming up and talking to me. It was so great to have meet new friends and what a great time. What a great, great time. Okay, let's go to the good stuff. Let's go through my bags. What did we get? Before I left for the retreat, what's sitting here right now is something that I stitched and I finished. Nicola was kind enough to give us a small sampler before we all left on our trip. Her name is Eliza Stringer, age six. Now it's not released yet. I don't think it's gonna be released for a while maybe. You could ask Nicola, but uh, I don't believe this, not, this is not released. It was something she'd gifted us beforehand. We were going to stitch it up if you framed it, great. If you if you finished it into something like I did, great too. But bring it with you so we can all see your Eliza's. So I can finally show you guys my finish. Anyway, this is Eliza Stringer. I think I said Springer. Her name is Stringer, age six, by Hands Across the Sea. So here's my finish. I needed something that I could pack in a tight suitcase that could really withstand getting beat up and that would still look good when I pulled it out of my bag. So what I decided to do is to take this little sampler and make it into a pillow. I'm gonna put it up close so you can see the detail of the alphabet and you can see the detail of the sampler itself. Eliza Stringer. What I decided to do is add the little, oh, I call them dingleberries, I know. I, I, <laughs> I don't know what they're called, Lady Dots. Actually, this came from my local uh, Hobby Lobby and it's just little balls connected to the side. You can really see them right here. Actually, where's my board? Let me grab my board. Okay, now you can see it a little bit better. So you can see that I added the little circle things on the for edging. I added edging and I added just a plain black because I wanted it to stay fancy. I wanted it to just stay plain. So it really brought out the sampler. So you can see the black and then the sampler. I stuffed it with um, polyfill and I think she turned out great. She got a little beat up in my suitcase. and uh, But I'm going to pack her a little more solid. Right now she needs a little bit more batting but I am gonna pack her a little bit more solid with, or not batting, uh, polyfill. I'm gonna pack her a little bit more, but this is my finish of Eliza Stringer. And she was so much fun, and I thank Nicola for giving us this chart. And I couldn't wait to show you guys. This is the one I was talking about in my last video that I just wasn't able to show you guys yet until the retreat was over. And it's just so sweet. This is gonna go back in my dough bowl and gonna sit on the back table with amongst, with along with, I can't even talk, along with some other small samplers. So anyway, just love the trim. The trim was a little fumbly for me at first, but then I got the hang of it. So it's fun to do your own finishes. And again, I needed something that could withstand getting beat up in a suitcase traveling so far away. And that's her, that's, uh, what does it say? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. So that's my finish. Now, people have asked me, how, did you get to see the, oh, here's the other thing I forgot to tell you guys. Nicola sent us the chart and she said, you guys choose the thread and the fabric. So we don't know, we don't have a color palette. There was no key. So we chose whatever. There was lots of variegated colors. There was some reds. There was lots of other colors. Mine I chose to do in black, which turns out, I believe the original was in black. So anyway, I chose black because you guys know how much I love monochromatic. And I chose Hemingway 30, no, 56 count. This is a 56 count finish. And it's on Hemingway, I believe, by, oh, who does Hemingway? Uh, needle and Flax. So... Yeah, I wanted it really, really small, so I chose 56 count, and that's my finish. Anyway, let's go on. What else did we receive? When we first got to the retreat, we had a fish and chips box sitting on our table. This is what it looked like. 
traditional fish and chips. And when you open the box, each one was color coded. I asked for 46 count fabric, so everything was color coded. Open the box. I have not opened this since I've been there. Um, again, you're gonna hear paper and stuff. I'm just gonna take out things. We received lots of gifts, and I decided to go ahead and show you the table gifts that people gave. Lots of people passed out little things, and as I go along, I'm gonna show what I received. I received a Saju, is that how you pronounce it, box? And it had these adorable thread twists in them. And here's what they look like, with the fancy ladies. And you twist your thread around it and keep it as a, you know, for your project. They all have a, I don't know if you can see that, the fancy lady with the hat. And these were all, you know, these are all fancy ladies. There you go, that's a better picture. Isn't this wonderful? What a great surprise. What a great gift. Next, I got some floss tags. Again, I'm going to go through these a little bit fast. We received these. And I'll tell you what these were for in a minute. We received a short history of British fish and chips. <laughs> Talks about mushy peas, which I like. Lots about the UK, a little history about the UK. We had a game and we are, each table had the same game. And what it is, is you have to identify the movie. Now the movie, let's see if I can remember. Let's see if I could remember. Okay, here's one. The clue is a colorful feline the Pink Panther. So these are movies or TV shows. I believe these are movies, films. Each answer is the title of a film. For example, Uppermost Pistol, Top Gun. Here's another one, Genuine Gravel, True Grit. And that's a movie. So this was really fun. We had the, the challenge at each table. My badge that we all wore for the retreat and it, it, it had a little charm to go with it of the Union Jack. We had, oh gosh, we had so many wonderful things. Look at this adorable can. It's like a little tin can. It's fireflynotes.com. Firefly, where's my glasses? fireflynotesonline.com and uh, it's adorable. It's a slide where you can slide it. It's like a little case that slides. That was in the fish and chips box. Actually, you know what? There, that's better. Isn't that adorable? It's a shiny top. It's just really beautiful. What did I put inside? Oh, it's got a magnet. It's got a magnet inside. So um, perfect for your needles. That was in the box. Uh, more thread winder for your threads. We received a measuring gauge. Look at how cute this little thing is scissors with the hands across the sea sampler on the back. More thread winders. We also received a little uh, message in a bottle. It's got a cork top. And inside is your raffle ticket along with some needles. I don't know if you can see the needles all that well, but there was a raffle ticket uh, inside. And then of course the tag that says the Great British Sampler Retreat. Super cute. Now the raffle bags, I got one. I think everybody did. But the way you go in line depends on the number on your ticket. So maybe the bags were different. We received like an eyeglass cleaner. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful for your eyeglasses? Very pretty. And pins. And these are beautiful, beautiful pins. I, don't, I hope you can see those. Really, really pretty. Uh, can, like counting pins. Okay, that was all inside the fish and chips box. That is so fun. Okay, next we received 
uh, crushed walnut shells. This is for the pillow for the from the chart that Nicola gave us to make the little pillow that says the Great British Sampler Weekend. And uh, this was sand, so I brought this home. I was able to, I was a little worried about the weight, but it was no problem. It's not that heavy. But anyway, we received this, the crushed walnut shells to fill a mini pillow. Now, we also received the chart. So the, here's the chart. And down here, you can see this is actually a like a four-sided pillow. I decided to do it flat, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is the little sampler we received. It's called A. Robson 1897, and it's from Hands Across the Sea Studio. Sorry for the glare. So the little pillow down here, the Great British Sampler Weekend. On the sides, like I said, it's like a multi-sided pillow, and then there's the counting pins right there or the, you know, pins. So anyway, this particular little pillow has sides to it where you can, you can actually stitch and I'll show you. I don't think she's going to care if I show this graph. It shows Swindon 2023. And that's what you attach to the sides of your little pillow. So the, and then you can put your name. This is just the name of the little girl, but you can put your own name and you make that little pillow and fill it with the sand that we got fill it with the crushed walnut shells so here's my progress i started this and again i'm going to do it flat since then one of the members of the group the retreat group created another type of little chart that says the same thing the great british sampler weekend swindon and is underneath 2023. I'm going to redo it. So right now I started what uh, we were given fabric. And here's my start of the little pillow that I just showed you a few minutes ago on the chart. So now that I've already done part of the bottom, I don't think that I could squeeze Swindon in there 2023. So I'm going to redo it. I'm going to redo, I'm going to finish this. I'll make it into a little pillow and make it look like this filled with sand and then just put some fa backing fabric on it. And then I'm gonna do it again, but I'm gonna put Swindon 2023 on it. And I, anyway, we, we were given the threads, that's all Verisois silk, 46 count for me. And I don't know what the fabric is, but it's really pretty. And it's gonna make the cutest little pillow. Very, very cute. What did I buy? I bought one thing and he is adorable. Look at him, he's a mouse. <laughs> So it's a scissor holder. It's, it is so good quality. It's heavy and it's a scissor holder. The one I currently have right now keeps tipping over. I've got, I've got one that's a uh, beautiful glass that I have upstairs, but this one is actually, a, you can see the different holes for the scissors and the mouse. So I put him in my luggage bag. When I got to open my suitcase, the mouse had fallen off and I went, oh my God. I told Rick, Oh my God, my mouse broke. I'm so bummed. We got to find some glue. I'm so dumb. It's a magnet. So he sits on a magnet. <laughs> so he's supposed to come off. Anyway, I thought that was really cool because now I've got a magnet in there. If I need to set a needle in there for some reason or anything like that, I've got the magnet just like that. And the mouse sits on top of the magnet. And he's got a magnet underneath too. You can see. Is he not the cutest little thing? I loved it. And uh, these were available in different sizes. I wanted a good size heavy one so it wouldn't tip over. Isn't he just cute? So cute. Okay, we came into the retreat the next day and these were sitting on the, where's my thing? These were sitting on our tables. It's adorable. It's got a sampler. It's a scissor holder with a beautiful pair of scissors and there's sampler, red sampler all over the sides. So that was the next gift that we got. Really, really cute. Even the bottom has a sampler on it. Really fun. And the scissors are little. Isn't that cute? Very cute. Okay, so we got that. That was sitting on our table when we walked in the next day. What else was sitting on our table? Nicola told us, allow this much space in your luggage because something big is coming. Wait till you guys see this. Along with the scissor holder, 
this was sitting on the top of this. <laughs> Look how big it is. It's fantastic. It's gorgeous, gorgeous. And it is, you can put so many things inside. And what was, op what was inside the very first tray? Look at what she lined it with. Is that fabulous? That's why she gave us the additional liners if we want to line it. I mean, we can line it with whatever we want, but she gave us two additional liners just like this to put inside if we wanted to put inside the other ones. Isn't this gorgeous? I, I couldn't believe it. She warned us. She said, we're giving you something big. So this was what we got. I mean, seriously. And then look at the back. I just now noticed the back. Is that fantastic? Oh my goodness, that's just wonderful. Absolutely beautifully made. It's actually heavy, but I'm, I'm doing okay lifting it. It's just phenomenal. So, like I said, lots of storage space for threads and, oh no. Oh, hold on, I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we've recovered. Anyway, it's just gorgeous. I, I can't even. What a wonderful, wonderful gift to receive. So that was sitting on our table. And we were all laughing. We were like, oh my God, how are we going to pack this? Actually, it was easy because you could put things inside the drawers. And it was actually pretty easy to pack. Wonderful idea to line the drawers with. Okay, what else did we receive? Okay, I got to meet Michelle from Mama Loves You GB. She has a floss tube, a YouTube video. She gave me a packet of Welsh cakes. Yum, I love food. I'm a foodie, total foodie. But I had to keep these away from my husband. And I told Michelle, if I show him these, I'll go back to the room and they'll be gone. Like th there will be crumbs in here. He'll leave me one. There's four, four of five, four. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so anyway, she gave me some Welsh cakes along with some beautiful, uh, these I have not, stickers and a thread ring, a really pretty thread ring. I mean, just beautiful. Look at how pretty that is. I love thread rings. I love thread tags. So she did include some thread tags <laughs> from her website, I think. Oh my God. And uh, stickers. Lots of pretty stickers, which I keep a journal, not a journal, but a daily cross stitch calendar. So these are perfect to put in my calendar. Very, very fun gift from a very special floss tuber. Very, very special. Okay, next. What did I receive next? I received, okay, here's the bag. Remember I showed you the little bottle? Uh, inside was a ticket. When she called your number, you go up and get your bag. This is the bag. And I was able to go up and see what was inside this giveaway bag. Now this whole, the, one of the sponsors for this retreat was Hobby House Needleworks in New York. They sponsored it too, and which is probably why it's being held in New York next year. And I had some wonderful things. This is from traditional. Now, this some of this stuff may I may have put in the bag. Traditional Stitches handed out a ruler with a pretty tassel. Traditional Stitches is located in Canada. Wonderful ladies. I've met them before. Super nice. And it says, you know what? It says, Anna Johnson, 1832, Traditional Stitches, Hands Across the Sea Exclusive. I don't remember that. I'm gonna have to look. Okay, we received an embroidered bookmark. Again, this might be from actual, these. some of these might be gifts from people because I kind of put it in the bag, but the majority of this came from the gift bag that I received. So this is a really beautiful bookmark. I'm thinking this was on our table as a gift from someone and it doesn't say, it just says, uh, you know what it says, uh, mabenarts.co.uk. Anyway, a beautiful embroidered bookmarker. Isn't that pretty? The colors, I don't think you're going to see the colors that well, but they're multicolors. And then there's some pretty metallic threads on the back and some beads. So this is really pretty. 
What a pretty gift. Um, let's see. We received cards from Hands Across the Sea. You guys recognize these beautiful cards, greeting cards. They're big. Like, that's the size of my hand. They're a big card. We received Hands Across the Sea cards. I received Sarah Haworth, 1835, Hands Across the Sea. I love this. I love the little ladies at the bottom, and I love that castle. I'm assuming that's a castle. It probably says inside. When I was young, what does it say? Hold on. When I was young, I little thought that learning was so dearly bought, but now I by instruction find it is not gained by an idle mind. Liverpool Exchange, Sarah Howarth finished her work in 1885. And that's what it looks like. Isn't that just beautiful? Gosh, I wish I could show it a little close up without the glare. Let me try. I think that's the best it's going to get. But the, oh, here we go. Let's do this. Anyway, absolutely beautiful. I do not know if that's out or not uh, or on her website. Okay, this one I adore. I love this. I got to see Simone. Simone sat at our table. She is a designer for Sew It ID. She's from the Netherlands. And I've actually met Simone before, but look at this gorgeousness. Red and blue. Let me show it up close. It's gorgeous. Sorry, it seems a little dark. I wish you could really see the pretty colors. I think this is the best view, but this chart is gorgeous. And here's the name, Soed ID. If you go on her website, it's S-O-E-D-I-D-E-E. -E -E. There's a button, it looks like a globe at the top. You can click it and English will come up. So anyway, that is something I really think I wanna stitch. It's just gorgeous. It's called LM 1914 to 1917 gorgeous. Next, we received Sophia Stafford, and this was gifted to me by Mama Loves You GB. And again, check out her YouTube video and her Etsy shop, but Sophia Stafford 1839 is gorgeous. Let me show you up close, and that way you get a better view of the whole. I love, love that house. While I'm talking about Mama Loves You GB, she just recently came out with these, I mean, adorable perforated paper owls. Check her out, check out her Etsy shop. I'm gonna link her down below, but check out the new owls that she has. They, I'll be buying them. They're just, they're so beautiful. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous chart. Next in the bag, Christina's Hidden Queen Self-Lined Needlebook by Sissy Bailey Smith, Gentle Pursuit Designs. She gifted us this. This was one of our speakers. Sissy did a phenomenal job, and she gifted us a booklet of hers, and these designs are inside. And I guess it's a needle book. I didn't get a chance to... Oh, and there's history. There's a historical area where you can read about different things. Pages and pages of research. She's done a lot of research. She was an excellent speaker. And it was just such a treat to meet her. And um, But that's what she gifted us. Really, really pretty. Okay, so that was in the gift bag that I got from the retreat. Let's take a look at one more bag that is full of stuff that I, I piled in. This has all come from different people and friends and just such great, such great gifts. I don't know if you can tell, but this is a chalkboard that you could definitely mount some cross stitch on. It's a black chalkboard. Make and create chalkboard. There's even chalk. Oh my gosh, that's cute. So you could display something on here like a cross stitch or you can use it as a chalkboard. Very cute. Okay, next, I've got a whole thing inside of this of little treats that people sh made. I wanted to show you because it might give you some really good ideas of what to bring as a little... If you wanted to bring... Table gifts are never required. It was talked about in our group whether or not people wanted to bring table gifts. It's something 
I first found out about table gifts in the Netherlands. When I went to the Netherlands retreat back in 2019, people were giving, at our table, people were giving each other just little gifts of cross stitch. And it was so fun and I thought, I'm gonna do that the next time I go to a retreat is just to bring a little something, maybe some DMC thread, maybe some little thread bling, you know, like keychains or something, just little fun things. And I didn't know about that until I went to the Netherlands. So I received some wonderful gifts and this is exactly what they look like, like in little bags. And so here's an example of some thread, thread tags. My friend Bettina actually made a copy or made a picture and had them made into like business cards on say Vistaprint, Shutterfly, anything that makes business tag or business cards is a great idea to bring to a retreat. It has her Instagram name on the back. And then she included a sampler that she stitched. What a great gift, a great little thing just to say who you are and to give someone something that they can use for their cross stitch. I received this, oh my God, <laughs> look at this. I love this so much. I just adore this, it's so cute. Pin cushion, candy, oh my gosh, candy. I'm always about candy. <laughs> Uh, I got to speed it up a little bit because we have a vet appointment in a few minutes. Okay, lots more candy. This is actually one of my favorite German candies ever. It's upside down. Ritter. Ritter. I love it. Oh my gosh, I've got wonderful cards. This one is actually, it has the chart on the back. Uh, stickers is another great idea for people that do a calendar. Oh my gosh, this is so, these are napkins. How beautiful are these? The honeybee. A little thing of napkins. A little kit. And this came with thread. Silks. This is the front of the little postcard. And there's a little thing on the back. It's a chart. And the chart says American Homes. This design is by Historische Stickmuster. You can find it on their site. Again, it's a German website. And um, this is what it looks like. But the chart, I'm just gonna flash it. It says American Homes. And we got thread. So what, a, what an amazing gift. Okay, continuing on super quick. I received a wonderful, I mean, just, I can't tell you about all the gifts that were just so wonderful. Pen, pencil, and eraser. This is perfect for retreats because people are always looking for paper to write on. Sometimes you want to exchange information with your table mates, maybe addresses, email addresses. Um, you're always looking for something to write on. Paper, pen, and pencil, and an eraser. Perfect gift for a, a, a gift, um, for a retreat. Oh my gosh, from my Dutch friends, Stroopwafels my favorite. <laughs> I love stroop waffles. And I got a Cadbury chocolate. And I received the most beautiful bag from my dear friend Catherine. Okay, wait till you see what else I got. Look at this little thing. It's like a little pin cushion with a button. Look at how thin. I adore this. I love this kind of thing. Oh, I'm, a, I'm just, a, I love it. Okay, got some more tags, beautiful tags. And again, perfect to hang thread. When you're working on a project, grab some thread tags, hang some thread. What a great idea to just pass around, have your information on the back, like your Instagram, and leave space for people to put your uh, thread color if you're using it for a project. Okay, seriously, look at what my friend Catherine made. I, I can't even, I cannot even. This is so cute. What a great memorial for uh, from the retreat. Buttons, a big old thing of buttons. And I think some things have fallen out. Um, cording that you could put on the edge of a finish. And this could also be used for like a little trash, uh, not a trash, a thread, you know, to toss your threads in or to carry around something. And it's got a handle on the top. 
so you can put it you can hang it I, I i just can't even i love this so much okay on the very last day after the retreat the day after which the retreat ended on sunday at five o'clock so we got to stitch and relax and have dinner together on sunday night on Monday, a group of us went to the city of Bristol to visit someplace very special to me. Now, you know, and it's special to a lot of people, you guys know I'm working on Mary 395. This came from an orphanage. These are orphans who actually stitched these during um, their stay at the orphanage. They had to learn alphabet. They had to learn how to sew. They had to learn a lot of different things. Well, these are very common from the children that were at the orphanage. And each one has a specific name and a sampler attached to it. So we had a wonderful time. We ended up going to the museum, which was about 40 minutes away in the city of Bristol. My husband organized an Uber or a taxi for us to get there. And we went, The th our, us friends went. It was me, my friend Catherine met us. Catherine met us there. And um, Bettina from Germany and Anamiek, my very, very dear friend Anamiek was with us the entire time. Again, I'm going to show pictures at the end of the retreat. You'll see us all hanging out together. But while I'm talking about the Bristol Museum, I'm going to actually show some clips starting here. traveled to Bristol, the actual buildings are still there. The museum is in building number two. Building number one was across the street and three and four in the vicinity. One of them is right behind number two. So everything's pretty close and the original buildings are still there. This is what housed the orphans. And when I walked into the museum, I could see pictures of the orphans and I saw their faces. I'm going to show a picture here. Tell me this picture doesn't speak a thousand words. I mean, it is so moving. It had such an impact on me seeing the faces of the children. So when I chose to stitch Mary 395, she's special. She's very, very big. This is the name of the little girl that stitched it. 395, a lot of people thought was the bed number. I think it had another, if I'm not mistaken, it had another reference I'll have to, I, I would have to go through and read if 395 was the bed. Um, Mary 395 contains many of the elements that confirm that the sampler was stitched in the orphanage. Um, obviously, she did it in red. I mean, there's so much. Okay, it says the only clues she left behind are the year she finished her sampler, which was 1869. And the number of the bed she occupied, which was 395. So that was her bed number. Anyway, all the motifs, the alphabet is very, it's just so special that these little girls stitch these. Now, here's the thing that's amazing. When you go to the orphanage, you walk in, it's very small. They have an area where there are still samplers hanging on the wall that you cannot take pictures of. Because, I mean... One, I don't think they've been reproduced. I could be wrong about that, but they didn't want us taking pictures, which we did not. And the thing about these samplers, you look at this, you don't realize how small they are in person. I mean, tiny, tiny. I mean, they're little. The count, somebody said, could be 80 count fabric. Could even be 100 count fabric, 75 count. We don't know what it exactly the count is, but here's what I know. It looks like a bed sheet. And those stitches are so tiny that it fascinates me that a little girl or a teenage girl stitched these samplers. I think that's why it was important for me to stitch one and try and reproduce that some, that someone else did. So visiting the Bristol Orphanage area, was it, it was just so special. 
And we went in, we saw different, I'm going to show pictures here. We went in and we saw different artifacts, different, um, you know, things that they saved from the, from the orphanage. And like I said, the only thing I don't have pictures of are the actual samplers hanging on the wall. There were several of them. There was one of them they actually had in a plastic tub with a cover. They weren't able to hang it because it's actually glued to the frame. And they're afraid they need to t send it off to a professional to have him lift it safely to keep it intact because you could see it's falling apart. But the dots, the X's on these, these samplers are dots. They are so small. And if you think about it, they didn't have, we were talking about this, they didn't have the magnification. They didn't have the lighting that we have now. We could go on Amazon right now and buy a magnifier to make it bigger. I, I just don't know how they were able to see such tiny, tiny stitches. And they're beautifully done. Anyway, what did I get from the British, from the museum? While I'm thinking about it, I brought my Bristol with me. You know what I just realized? I have a complete another bag full of stuff to show you. But let me show you my sampler. And this is Mary 395. And I got a lot done. I actually got some good progress while I was there. This is 40 or 46 count. I'm using cranberry bell swath silk and I dyed this myself. Now, let me get a good, that's actually a better, better, this is more of like a tea dyed pretty color and it's a little shadowed right now, but that's my progress. I'll show it up close. But this is my progress on Mary 395 as I try and reproduce, and I should say restitch, not reproduce. I try and restitch what I saw hanging on the walls of the museum. Just absolutely fantastic. So I've got a long ways to go, as you can see. I've got a lot more alphabet. I've got a lot more motifs. There's the motifs at the bottom. So let me show you what I got from the actual museum. They sell postcards, so I bought some postcards. And I'll show, I'll flip through the postcards real quick so you can see. That there's George Mueller, he's the one that founded the orphanage. Very, very special man. The little girls. And what does this say? Oh, this is a letter from an orphan. Dear and honored sir, may I once again take the liberty of writing to you to thank you for all and all my dear friends for the kindness which I for so many years experienced in the orphan house. It is ever with feelings of gratitude I recall the care and love bestowed on me and all my dear companions in that truly favored home. That was a letter written by a former orphan to George Mueller. So you can see the buildings in the back. That's what we saw are those buildings. And then we have this one. It's so hard to see without, you know, but at least you get an idea of what it looked like back in the, back in the day. You can see the boys. They had a housing area for boys. I don't remember which house it was, but uh, here's another one. Uh, Dear sir, I remember, let's see. Dear sir, I well remember that whenever I met Mrs. Mueller, when in the home, it was always a kind word or a pat on the head. Little things, some say, but still such as men remember that when boys in a charity school, it was to give the home feeling. That was an, also a letter that was written. Another picture of the orphans. And then last but not least, another group photo of all the orphans. Just, just very special. And then quickly I'll show the other batch of postcards that I bought. And there's again, bits of the samplers that were hanging on the wall. This is one of the ones we saw in the tub that was really falling apart. More motifs. Uh, blue. They had some blue samplers. And then last but not least is this one. So they sell these postcards there. I bought those. They also had some books. One of them was free. I don't remember which book. I think it was this one that was free. I don't remember which one. And then they also had this book that I bought. One of the two, one of the two I bought. 
so special. Okay, let's go through one more bag full of goodies that I wanna show you before I leave. This was a wonderful little pin keep that we were gifted. Old Willow Stitchery gave us this Scottish pin keep. So sweet. The designers that were presenters were really kind. Oh, there goes my couple little things. Another little gift. Isn't that little, isn't that adorable? This was a gift. That's a little, like a fuzz ball. It's a little pin thing. So cute. And the beads inside, are those magnetic? I don't know what they are, but they're so cute. Okay, this was our bag. Before I forget, I wanted to show you our bag. It's a tote bag. So much fun. And then we received lots more goodies that I put in the bag. Some a little mushroom. It's hard to see. Um, Emily Williams, galloping horse quilting. She gifted us a little key, like a. It's a thread. It's a thread tag with a little mushroom on it. I've got some more tags to make some thread, make some thread tags. And again, such a great gift because it tells you who gave it to you on the back. Caroline's Corner, YouTube. This one, it doesn't say on this back one, but what a great idea for thread. Another tag, Girl with a Gavel Stitches. Another gift. Isn't that beautiful? What is, is that a, it's a bird. Oh my gosh, she stitched it. She stitched it. Evelyn Joseph. Oh my goodness, she stitched that. And she put that in there. It's a little bit, it's a little bird. So let me see if Evelyn, if it says, oh my gosh, Evelyn Joseph from Tulsa, Oklahoma, Navir Beach, Florida. Uh, Instagram, Evelyn Josephs. Let me make sure. What a great gift. Oh my goodness. Evelyn Joseph 08 on Instagram. Seriously, that, let me take this out. This dessert, this is just too much. This is so wonderful. It's so hard to see with the, without the glare. But that's stitched on a little tiny, tiny piece of fabric. Amazing. God, I wish I could talk to her and tell her how much I love this. And then we got a little magnet from the under the garden moon dot com. We got a piece of fabric, mason linen. I believe this came from cat isn't that beautiful, that color? Gosh, that is really pretty. Let me show you the chart that I think that it came with. Postcard. Really beautiful postcard. We received some charts, really special charts from Violets and Verses. Look at that band sampler. Let me show it up close so you can get a good idea of it. It's so pretty. I am so interested in band samplers right now. That's beautiful. So we received this chart. We received a gorgeous, gorgeous chart from Sarah. It's Sarah Sophia Railton, 1796. Sampler Snippet by Red Barn Samplers. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh, she gave such a great presentation. And she gifted us some, I believe it's snippets from this chart, if not the whole chart. It says a snippet. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful, seriously. So check her out, Red Barn Design. She's a wonderful presenter and uh, Beautiful. We received a little bit of banding. Oh, I gotta find out what this is too. Maybe what we received. Banding, thread. Okay, this is gorgeous. This is from uh, Kathleen Cross Stitch Antiques, Annie Matilda Moss, Daglingworth School, 1872. Kathleen is so thoughtful. I've met her several times before. She is so interesting and she's so knowledgeable. She's just, oh, I just love Kathleen. Little bit more, I got a, a bag. I got a just stitching along card and it's a, there's a scan code on the back. 
a little kit, Great British Sampler. This is Italian linen, 38 count from Annemiek. She owns a cross-stitch shop in Roden, the Netherlands, called D. Handwerk Boutique. I cannot say enough good things about her and her service. Her shop is wonderful. We received a gift. Here's another little gift in a little bag. And this is from Kelly Gillis, handcrafted in Nova Scotia. Instagram at Waterstone Making Room. And she gifted us, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. The little counting pins. Oh my gosh, look at the sparkle on that. How gorgeous. We received another little gift. Yeah, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. This says Pensacola Beach. How fun, and it's a little thread keeper. You can put that on your thread. How fun, I love these gifts. And that's it. So I wanted to do a quick YouTube video before I left for the vet, so I'm on my way to take our boys in <laughs> for a checkup and tell you all about the retreat. It was just fantastic. If you'd like to see pictures, I'm gonna include the pictures at the end of the whole trip and I'll include more from the retreat. And um, I hope you enjoyed hearing about it and seeing all the goodies. I cannot wait to see you guys next week. I will come back with a regular YouTube video and show you what all I've been working on. Thanks everybody, take care and I'll see you next time, bye.
Nein, das muss schon ausgeben. Nein, das war nicht richtig. Ja, das ist, was soll ich denn machen? Ja, das ist, was soll ich denn machen?